Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting and exciting topic, the placebo effect. The power of positive thinking and the patient doctor relationship the placebo effect and the power of positive thinking but what is placebo placebo is giving a substance an inactive substance trying to convince the patient that it is going to have beneficial effects and then giving it to the patient and surprisingly the patient gets beneficial effects of the substance despite that substance not being pharmacologically active so placebo is an innocuous or a harmless treatment that mitigates the patient's symptoms Placebo, it could be anything that seems to be real medical treatment and producing the desirable therapeutic effects. So what is placebo effect? Getting therapeutic effects by giving a non-therapeutic substance getting the beneficial therapeutic effects by giving non-therapeutic substance just by trying to convince the person that the non-therapeutic substance is in fact a therapeutic substance that is placebo effect so that's the power of positive thinking so if we can make believe the patient that what we are going to give is a wonderful treatment it is going to have a pleasant positive effect on the person and his symptoms are going to abate and and person is going to get real good health that is the power of positive thinking in fact in one of the landmark papers for placebo effects in medicine seeing is believing published in one of the most reputed journals science translation medicine in the year in the year 2011 by dr bingel at all he has elegantly proved that when we give a an analgesic substance but make patients believe that it is non analgesic it is not going to bring down the pain. In fact, the person also persists that his pain has not gone. This is because it activates on the hippocampus, which is responsible for person perceiving as if the pain hasn't gone. It was beautifully proved by functional MRI. On the other hand, if we give a non-analgesic and say it's a wonderful substance, it's an opioid and then give it to a person, the patient, though it was a substance which is not opioid, the person perceives as if the pain has been relieved. It is because it acts on singlet gyrus. So your comforting words, your words plays a major role in the patient's treatment. So the doctor-patient relationship is very, very important. If you just give some soothing words, comforting words, and try to convince the person, the patient that he's going to become well, he in fact becomes well. That is the power of positive thinking and that's the patient-doctor relationship. The placebo effect. So placebo, it could be anything that seems to be real medical treatment. For example, a doctor can give a sugar pill and say it's a wonderful medicine, you will become alright and the person becomes alright. 
a doctor can give a just a normal saline infusion and say it's a wonderful opioid medication IV opioid medication we are giving and the person becomes all right so by just comforting words by trying to convince a person the person's in fact becomes healthy symptoms are going to become less the word placebo has been derived from the latin language according to it the word placebo means i shall please so by placebo effect the doctor is trying to please the patient i shall please that is the word derived from the latin language for placebo in fact though there have been many scientists who who advocated this theory the placebo effect it was actually in the year 1801 john hegabert was the one who postulated this placebo effect so what is this placebo effect and how is the patient doctor relationship is so essential for this placebo effect and the patient becoming well what are the mechanisms of the patient doctor relationship first is the anticipation of reward by the patient when the patient has got belief in the doctor he anticipates the reward for example pain so when he has got headache and goes to a particular doctor on whom he has faith he anticipates the relief of pain that is a reward so anticipation of reward itself will will make the patient get the dopamine hormone released the dopamine is a reward hormone it gives pleasure so the anticipation of reward the anticipation and the expectation that his pain is going to come down by just meeting doctor and getting whatever pill he gives the pain is going to come down if when he thinks that way the pain is going to come down because the dopamine the reward hormone gets relieved that's one mechanism the second mechanism is that when the patient comes to the chamber and the doctor just touches him pats him on the shoulder feels the pulse this relationship between the patient and doctor doctor just cajoling the patient patting the shoulder and feeling the pulse that touch itself will make the patient get release of the hormone oxytocin which is a bonding hormone which gives happiness so the moment a doctor touches the patient and tries to heal the disease the patient's body system starts releasing oxytocin a bonding hormone which gives pleasure so by just positive words strong positive words and touching the person patting his shoulder we have the release of dopamine and oxytocin by the patient and the pain comes down suggestion you are going to be all right don't worry you are going to be all right if these are the constant words of encouragement used by the doctor to the patient it releases endogenous opioids the beta endorphins which acts on especially the periaqueductal gray matter and is pain going to come down just suggestion just suggest suggesting to the patient that this pain is going to come down i'm going to give wonderful treatment and even before he starts giving treatment the suggestion itself will make the patient release enkephalins and endorphins beta endorphins which act on the pain modulating pathway which controls the spinothalamic tract which which carries the pain sensations the pain modulation pathway comes from the cortex it comes from the cortex to the hypothalamus to the periaqueductal gray matter medulla oblongata and finally the spinal cord and gives analgesia it blocks the spinothalamic tract carrying the pain sensations so by just mere suggestion that the pain is going to come down the patient starts releasing the beta enkephalins beta endorphins which act on the periaqueductal gray matter and brings down the pain this is suggestion and then when the patient has got 
fondness has got good nice pleasant memories of the doctor and he goes to the doctor with a lot of confidence that his his pain is going to come down and is a very friendly doctor goes on talks in a friendly manner so if he goes with that anticipation anticipation that his his disease is going to come down and and his stress levels are coming down because of the friendly nature of the doctor and when he starts talking to the doctor who is very friendly who is comforting who is giving a positive suggestions the stress hormones get decreased and that also will help him get relieved of the complaints the pain so there will be decreased stress hormones when the doctor is very friendly so by these four mechanisms by these four mechanisms if the patient doctor interaction is is very conducive is very nice and very friendly just his words not even the real medicines by giving even pseudo medicines the patient's complaints come down if he's got faith in the doctor and the doctor gives positive suggestions that is the power of positive thinking so when anticipation of his pain going to get down the dopamine hormones get released by the touch of the doctor the oxytocin gets released by good suggestions by the doctor the encephalins and endorphins get released and when he is friendly the stress hormones get decreased so the doctor is very friendly nice giving positive suggestions and thoughts that itself will bring down the patient's problems and uh, sufferings so patient doctor relationship is very very essential not just the main pharmacological treatment even by these non pharmacological treatments person symptoms can can be brought down and can make the person healthy there are other factors also by which the placebo effect acts for example take the example of migraine or tension type headache whether we give treatment or not the headache is going to come down only to come back again so the natural history and regression of the mean so whether we give treatment or not it is going to come down the headache is going to come down the common cold is going to come down the fatigue is going to come down by giving whatever medication the doctor suggests so by natural history itself it's going to come down and they may think the doctor has done a wonderful job is given lovely medication and because of that only my sufferings have come down so the natural history plays a role mirror neurons when the doctor is really empathetic towards the patient again the transfer of energy gets occurred the neurons which wire together fire together neuroplasticity so when the doctor is very sympathetic towards a patient and goes beyond sympathy sympathy just feeling bad for the patient empathy is putting oneself into the other person's shoes so the doctor is empathetic towards a patient thinking that he himself is suffering from real chronic headache the mirror neurons act and a transfer of information occurs the same neurons which modulate the pain also modulate on the patient and his pain is going to come down the mirror neuron theory conditioning we all know the famous pavlov's experiment on the dog when the bell is rung and the foot is served the dog associates the ringing of the bell with the foot being served and therefore the next time even if the foot is not served when the bell rings the dog starts salivating condition so when you condition the patient it's a wonderful medicine it's going to act well your your symptoms are going to get alleviated you're going to become normal you're going to become healthy the moment you start conditioning it becomes a condition stimulus and the response will be a decrease of all his pains so all are all these are the mechanisms by which the placebo effect takes place so the clinical applications of placebo effect is in the pain like headache chronic pain stress like like apd acid peptic disease even immunological conditions insomnia irritable bowel syndrome all this can be managed by the placebo effect but one real landmark paper which has conclusively proved the 
placebo effect is the paper which was published in the science translational medicine by Dr. Bingal et al. in the year 2011. The name of the paper is for placebo effects in medicine seeing is believing. What they did is that they took patients who had pain and they gave a very powerful opioid remifitanil and said that it is not an opioid it does not going to bring down your pain and they gave it to the patient though it was a powerful analgesic and opioid the persons experienced pain they said they still had pain and the pain didn't come down so the doctor's suggestions when he suggested that the pain is not going to come down despite giving a powerful opioid and convincing the person that it is not opioid person did not have a good response to pain it depends upon the word to speak to the patient this is because why the pain did not disappear this is because the hippocampus was stimulated hippocampus is responsible for memory and anxiety related to pain so they they demonstrated this in functional mri so when they gave an opioid but said it is not an opioid and it is not going to reduce the pain same thing happened to the patient the pain did not reduce because of stimulation of hippocampus the memory and anxiety associated with the pain on the contrary on the contrary when they gave just normal iv saline and told the patient it's a wonderful opioid it's going to act well and your pain is going to come down and to their surprise the pain came down with just saline which has got nothing to do with pain and they showed in the functional mri that the singlet gyrus got stimulated got fired this time on functional mri which is responsible for emotional reaction to the pain and modification of pain modulation pathway and the pain came down so your words the doctor's words are real tonic for the person for the patient if you use strong positive thoughts and say it's going to get cured it gets cured in the patient on the contrary if you say you got a very big disease even if we give medicines, it may not get cured. If you give that kind of suggestion, whatever treatment you try, it is not going to work. So doctor's words are very important. The placebo effect is very important. Even the Hippocrates said, we, there, there may not be cure for many diseases. So what? We cure sometimes. We treat often. But we can comfort always. So cure may be only sometimes, but we can treat often, but we can always comfort. So the doctor's primary role is to comfort the patient. We may not be able to cure. Cure is only sometimes. We treat often, but we can always comfort. So doctor's primary responsible when a person approaches him is to comfort. In fact, according to the Bingle's paper, also this has been proved. Thoughts, the power of positive thinking. Thoughts can either enhance or antagonize the patient's response to medical treatment. So the thoughts, the thoughts which the doctor puts in or others puts in can either enhance or antagonize the medical treatment, the response to the medical treatment. So thoughts can either enhance or antagonize the response of the patient to medical treatment. So thoughts are very important. This is the power of positive thinking. So the placebo effect, the power of positive thinking and the patient-doctor relationship is very important and doctor plays a vital role in both pharmacological and non-pharmacological treatment and his words are going to be very important to the patient in his recovery. So I hope you will all become good doctors, good human beings and we always have powerful positive thoughts for a healthy living. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture. If you have any suggestions or comments, kindly post on to my YouTube channel. But please like and subscribe my YouTube channel, Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my every page, Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.